and welcome to the 189th edition of Beer Issues. My name is Matt Brucker, and I'm coming to you live here from Casa de Brucker, where we're going to be having, having another very good beer. Today we're going to be having, from Sierra Nevada, the Wonderland Nectarine Ale, is what they call it, a Nectarine Ale. So let's do this, let's talk about this beer, and let's talk about what it is and kind of uh, talk about the different flavors and scents, okay? The, the beer um, rates at 85 out of 100, according to Beer Advocate, would, which would make it a very good beer. Now for a nectarine ale, it's quite, quite boozy. It clocks in at 7.5% alcohol by volume. So it's got a nice um, uh, kick to it. Um, now I've had this beer before, so I'm not gonna tell you that I haven't, but we're gonna talk about it as I pour it into this beautiful Bruckert Tavern glass here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour this beer. We're gonna try and give it a little bit of uh, head here. And we're gonna talk about the colors, the smells, the whole shoot and match, and really what it is, okay? They call it a nectarine ale, but uh, as I've been doing some research on the beer, just to find a little bit more about it, because it had a very unique flavor to me that I really liked, and I really need to do some research to, to uh, kind of find out what it was that I really liked about the beer. And right off the bat, after reading it, um, Sierra Nevada does these beer camps with um, other brewery, famous you know, breweries or brewers around the world, where they'll come to Sierra Nevada and spend a couple of weeks and they work on collaboration beers. And this happens to be one of their collaboration beers that they did with a brewery out of the UK. Now, when I think of the UK beers, there's a lot of beers that I don't, that I think about, and then there's a lot of beers I don't think about, okay? But this beer is actually a, a Kolsch, which I, when I think of Kolsch, I'm always gonna think German because the Germans have kind of perfected the, the Kolsch, um, and I've been to the home of the Kolsch's, so I, I, I feel that I uh, am a pretty good uh, expert on Kolsch's. Um, and the key to a Kolsch is you gotta drink a Kolsch when it's fresh. I know we've talked about this before. Uh, what I like is there's a, several um, Florida breweries that are putting out fresh Kolsch's. Uh, the problem is, is the Kolsch's, by the time they get made overseas in Germany, and then by the time they make it to the United States, by the time they make it onto the shelves, by the time they get to us, a lot of times they're nearing their their end of their, their shelf life, okay? Um, but what they did is that they put together this and then they you know made this delicious culture, I guess, to begin with, and then they were uh, talking about what they were gonna fruit it up with. And um, that's how these uh, the North Carolina nectarines came into the mix here, okay? Now this doesn't fall into an ale or a Kolsch category. It actually uh, falls into the uh, fruit the field, uh, fruit and field category uh, under the rating. So that's what they're rating under the fruit and field because it does have uh, a bit of the nectarine. But the thing about it is, is and, and that I like about it, and we'll talk about it, is that the nectarine does not overpower the beer, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and smell it first. Mm. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would think this is gonna be super heavy with nectarine, like super like overpowering nectarine, just for the smell of it, because it smells not like fake nectarine, but fresh nectarine, and I love a good fresh nectarine. You get that nectarine, uh, peachy kind of, uh, you know, uh, smell to it. And you see it's a golden color. I, I always expected when I had seen it, and maybe it's because of the brown bottle, but I expected it to be a little bit darker color, but you are getting a really light golden color. You got good uh, head retention on here, as you can see. Um, I poured a, quite a bit of head on there, but it's still retaining very well. Uh, so good, that's a good sign. And most Kolsch's are going to be more of a golden color. 
But for some reason, when it said ale and it was in the darker, the brown bottle, um, I just expected it to be darker and more of an amber color, but you are getting a golden color. Um, so anyway, Yeah, I mean, you're getting a, a sweetness of nectarine and peach in, in the smell. So I'm gonna just dig into it, because I've had this before, and I know that it, it does not overpower the good quality for a Kolsch. Now, the thing is, is a Kolsch is not a very high alcohol beer either. So, you know, you get your Kolsch's usually clock in in the 4% range. But I think with the amount of nectarines, they use the nectarines to pump up the alcohol in this beer when they're brewing it. So that's the one thing I didn't remember. So a Kolsch is going to be a light multi with some hops uh, towards the end. So the way this beer goes, when you taste it, you taste the multi followed by the nectarine followed by the hop finish. Not a heavy hop finish, but a crisp uh, hop finish. And I'm telling you, it is beautifully balanced between where you get that malt in the beginning, right into that uh, really nice nectarine flavor. And, and when I say nectarine, like I said before, not fake nectarine, fresh nectarine, uh, North Carolina nectarine. Really just a beautiful, beautiful nectarine flavor. And then you get those hops at the end. And there's some spice in there too. I can't put my finger on the spice. Um, you know, it, it almost seems now, I could be wrong, but maybe it's the, the type of hops they use. But it ends on almost like a hoppy, almost like a tangerine type flavor. And, and maybe my taster is a little bit off, but because I don't remember this from the other day, but. Malty, nectarine, hoppy, tangerine. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful beer. Um, I hope they make this again. This is uh, one of their, you know, like I said, from the beer camps, uh, a limited release, but I hope that it's popular enough that they uh, make this again, because from what I understand, reading up on the beer, it's selling out everywhere they, they put it out. Um, it's uh, getting uh, very hard, harder to find. And uh, um, I just hope that it kind of, I think it's a seasonal beer, so I hope they, they bring it back. Uh, uh, next year, because I, I think it's beautiful. This is a beer that I could sit by the poolside and drink because it, it's uh, refreshing. You wouldn't want to pound it by the pool, but it's certainly, uh, even at 7.5% alcohol, it's it's drinkable and doesn't taste like 7.5% 7 7 alcohol. Or it's something that you could have just sit around in the evening and enjoying because it's, uh, I would consider it a very versatile beer just because of the way all the flavors melt together. It makes a beautiful uh, Kolsch-ish um, type beer with a kick, we'll say. Absolutely beautiful. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you tell your friends about beer issues and how much fun we're having talking about great beers and drinking great beers. And if you want any cool uh, Beer Issues gear, like this beautiful Beer Issues t-shirt, go to shop.beerissues.com and you can get all the cool Beer Issues gear, hats, t-shirts, phone cases, you name it. Beer Issues, everything. Um, and as my wife likes to say, I have Beer Issues.